The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, Christ said, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days uh, were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving unto marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be grind and be in the field, and one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill, one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have, not, he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Those last two verses again, the Bible said, but know this, that if the good man of the house would have known what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken up. And Christ said finally, said, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And I begin to think about today the disciples, they begin to ask Christ. They said, Lord, what? tell us when it is that you're coming again. Tell us what day and tell us what hour it, that it is that you'll be coming. Lord, I believe they wanted to be ready. I believe, Brother Jonathan, they wanted to be watching in the day that he come, but Jesus looked at them very plainly, and he said, I don't know the day, and I don't know the hour. No man knows the day, and no man knows the hour that I'm coming. Not even the angels of heaven know the day that I'm coming, but only my Father, which is in heaven. And I begin to think about Christ told us it's going to be like this, and there'll be two in the field. One will be taken. Amen. He said there'll be two grinding. Amen. And one will be taken, the other left. He said there'll be two in the bed, and one of them be taken, and the other left. What does that tell me? That tells me he's going to come upon us suddenly. The Bible even tells me that his coming was going to be like a thief in the night. And the Bible said that the good man of the house would have known what watch that it was. He would that the thief was going to come. He said he would have not suffered his house to have been broken up. But he said that he would have been watching and waiting. Jesus said, therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, he said, the Son of Man cometh. He said it's going to be like this. He said like it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. He said because up until the day that the wind and the water and the rain began to fall from heaven and the flood came and carried them away. They didn't even know it was coming even though they had a man of God. I mean, Brother John and he was preaching to them and then Noah was a preacher of righteousness but yet they did not heed the warning they didn't hear the words that he had to say they thought they had plenty of time brother John but Jesus said just like that day that's going to be the day that I'm coming he said be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the son of man come I come to tell you today if you're out here and you're hearing my voice and you're not ready to meet the Lord. You don't have a promise tonight or tomorrow. He said be ready in this hour. You don't know what time I'm coming. He said it'll be just like it was in the days of Lot. They bought and they sold and they built it. They were eating. They were going about life every day. Amen. But I begin to take the day that fire began to fall from heaven. Amen. They knew the end. That destruction was at hand. I come to tell you today Jesus Christ is coming uh, and Jesus is coming soon uh, and are you ready to meet him today are you ready to meet the son of man should he come this hour before you make it home what happens if he comes are you ready to meet him Jesus was warning his disciples to be ready at all times we don't know what hour he's coming but I know this much it's easy to look around us and see the signs of the time amen the wars amen the rumors of wars earthquakes in diverse places amen famines and pestilence the sorrows that's upon the earth amen we're now being persecuted amen by the world and Jesus told me all these things would happen Amen. Uh, amen. Before he come again. Uh, amen. But bless be to God. Uh, amen. Brother Jonathan, I'm ready. Should he come tonight? Uh, I'm excited about Jesus coming. Uh, but yet in my heart, uh, there's a deep pain and sorrow uh, because I know the world uh, is 
is not watching. They are not waiting for the coming of the Son of Man. But you can tonight. I don't care where you are. And you fall down upon your knees and call upon Jesus Christ. Those that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. He will save you if you call upon Him. He is here and He's ready. I begin to think about tonight. See, you, might, you might say, preacher, you don't know where I've been and what I've done. You don't know how far I've drifted off into sin. You don't know the things that I've allowed in my life, and I, I, I don't know your story. I don't know your story, but I remember a story in the Bible where Jesus walks into the city of Samaria, and the Bible said that he sends the disciples on to the city to buy something to eat. And the Bible said that while they were gone, that Jesus went to the well, Jacob's well. And he met there a little Samaritan woman. And I believe Jesus sat down there and he said, Will you give me a drink of water? And I began to think about this lady said, Why is it that you being a Jew, that you ask me a Samaritan? to give you some water. You don't even have any dealings with us. The Samaritans was an unclean people. Hey, Amen. But I come to tell you today, Jesus, uh, he has no respect of person today. Uh, what he done for me, he'll gladly do for you today. But the Bible said that Jesus, we're going to tell this woman, he said, if you knew the gift of God and you knew who it was that asked you for water, he said, you would ask me for a living of water. He said, and I will give you water that you'll never thirst again. She said, I don't understand how it is that you say you'll give me some water. You don't even have anything to draw with. And the well is very deep. She said, are you any better than my father? Amen. Our father Jacob. And for many years and generations, we drank from this well. But Jesus told her, he said, whosoever drink of this water, he will thirst again. Can I tell you today, the drink of the world today will leave you empty. It'll leave you broken and without. But Jesus come to declare, He, even that believeth in me, from out of his belly would flow rivers of living water. Jesus said, but listen, if you'll take a drink of the water that I'll give you, you'll never thirst again. I'm glad today I got a drink of water that made me, amen, not want anything in the world again. I'm glad I got a drink of water that ain't left me alone. But he's always been with me. Jesus said, Lo, I'm with thee always. Even to the end. The drink of water. It was living water. And I'm still drinking from that fountain tonight. But what fountain are you drinking from? What fountain are you drinking from? This lady, she said, Tell me more. Tell me more about this water that you'll give me that I'll now have to come here and, and drink anymore. She still didn't understand what he was saying. But Jesus told that lady, he said, I want you to go home and I want you to get your husband and bring him to me and let us talk about this. She said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, well, have you said you have no husband? He said, you've had five and the one you have now, he's not even yours. Jesus wasn't condemning that woman, but it's a testimony that Jesus just doesn't care how far you've been, what you've done, or how much money you spent when you got there. He has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He has come to give life. He said, the enemy come to kill and to steal and destroy. He said, but I come to give life and give it more abundantly. Amen. I come to tell you, Jesus, amen, we're going to take the blood and take that water of life and wash you clean. Amen. The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold all things, they become new. Amen. What are you saying, preacher man? He no longer remembers all the things I've done in my life. He no longer remembers the sin I committed, brother Jonathan. But he gave me a brand new start. Gave me a brand new name. And gave me a brand new life. And you can have a life tonight in Jesus Christ you can have life in him Jesus said she began to tell him oh when Messiah comes he's going to tell us these things he's going to tell us all these things Jesus said 
He that you speak of, I'm He. The Bible said that this lady, she runs, she jumps up and she runs to the city. She leaves her water pot behind. She runs to the city. And she said, come and see a man. He told me all the things that I did. But Jesus didn't condemn her because of that. What she was saying, she was saying, come and see a man that loved me no matter what I've done. Come and see a man that knew about every man I had in my life, but yet he didn't care. He come to give me a drink of water. The Bible said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe upon him, that means you tonight, you've not went too far, but whosoever believe upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But he said, but God sent him not into the world to condemn the world. Christ has not come tonight to condemn you, but he's come to forgive you. He's come to make you whole, come to make you a new man, a new woman, a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. He's come tonight to bring you live in water but the bible said jesus said be ye all so ready for in such an hour as you think not the son of man cometh what are you going to do tonight i want you to look up in the sky right now everybody look, just look up what happens in this very moment if christ comes again because i heard him sing a song i said on an ordinary day just like today he is coming just like today you have no promise of going home tonight. You have no promise of leaving this little service out here in Walmart parking lot. You have no promise. But the promise that you do have is now. It is now. Call upon Him while He is near. Seek Him while He may be found. Today is a day of salvation because we don't have tomorrow. Those men and women, the Bible said that God spoke to Noah and He said, Noah, in seven days, Noah, I'm going to destroy the earth. Seven days. Noah worked for 120 years, and God said, Noah, seven days is all we got left. Seven days. Begin to prepare. And all the animals begin to come in the ark. Noah and his family, they begin to come into the ark. Amen. Know that the rain was soon to come. And the Bible said that God closed the door. Amen. The same man that preached for 120 years. Amen. The voice becomes silent. Amen. Today there's a voice that's proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. But there's coming a day the voice will be silent. The Bible said when God closed the ark, amen, it began to rain. And I began to think about I believe at that very moment, all of those men and women, amen, they turned away the call. And they turned it away. I, be I believe with my heart they begin to go to the ark. And they begin to knock on the door and say, will you let me in? Will you please let me in? But how many knows the Bible said, God said, my spirit will not always strive with man. Today, this hour, this moment, now was the time to be ready for Christ. Now was the time. Turn the news on every day and we hear about people in places just like this. Some demon field man or woman walks in with guns and kills everybody. You don't have the promise of anything, but I promise you, you have this. You have this moment to call on Christ. You have this moment to be ready. I tried to imagine, Brother Jonathan, what was going through their minds. I believe they heard every message that Noah preached as they're standing on the outside of the ark and they're knocking, wanting in because the rain is coming, the rain has fallen, the rain has fallen. And the rain begins to rise, the water begins to come up upon their legs from their ankles up to their knees and they begin to think, oh my God, what this man told me was true. What this man declared to me was truth. And I turned away the call. For what? Why do you neglect so great a salvation? Why do you turn away the Lord in this hour? For what reason? The Bible teaches me 40 days and 40 nights that water and rain fill. And I begin to think about it as the water begin to rise higher and higher. I believe there was mamas and daddies reaching for their children, taking them to the highest ground that they could find, only hoping that their life would be saved from the apparent destruction that was ahead of them. But what had happened? The moment they got to the high ground, here comes the water 
rising and rising again. Only then moms and dads, mamas and papas would take their family to higher ground only for the rain to continue to fall. You might think that you're safe now, but the rain is falling. I urge you tonight, wherever you're at, if you're not ready to meet Christ, be ready tonight. Be ready now. He loves you. God loves you so much that He gave His Son for you. I've got two girls, and I couldn't give either one of them for you. But God did. He doesn't care how bad you've made life. He doesn't care how much you've messed up. But He's come to give you life today. Brother Johnson, come here to me. If, if, if would. Some of you other brothers, come here. You see these good men of God right now? I'm going to ask somebody to do something ex extravagant right now. I'm going to ask somebody just to step out of their car and come up here tonight and say, I want to accept Christ as my Savior. I'm tired of life. Tired of how it's beating me up, how it's letting me down. I feel broken. I feel like I'm all alone. <laughs> The water of the world will leave you alone. It'll leave you broken. It'll leave you without. But Jesus said, I come to give you life. If you need Christ tonight, I beg you right now, come out of your car. Come down here and let me pray with you. Come and turn your life to Him. Give it to Him. Will you come? Will you come? Do you think you're here by accident? You're not here by accident. Some of you, this is so out of your way. You don't even know why you're here in this parking lot tonight. I do. Because the Spirit of God has drawn you here. To hear the message. For at such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I'm going to ask him to just turn this music up for me tonight. We're going to let it play. And I want to pray with some folk. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you ain't going to come out of your car, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to every one of you. <laughs> so, while there's time, come up here. Let us pray with you. Where are you at with the Lord? Are you saved? Are you ready tonight? Come, let us pray with you. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Somebody said, I'm out here in the parking lot. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. Jesus is here. Let's turn that up a little more. Jesus is here while he's talking to you. While he's talking to you, will you come? Will you come? If you're a child of God, I want you to just bow your head right now. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for you. We're praying for you. They're praying right now for you. Because that knock in your heart, that is Christ calling you. It is the very voice of God saying, I love you. <laughs> and you can be ready tonight. They're praying for you right now. Come out of your car. Come out of your seat. Come down here tonight and let me pray with you. Just give God your broken heart. Let Him take the pieces of your broken life, your broken heart, and let Him shape it and mold it into a vessel that is pleasing to Him. Come tonight. Come, come to the well of living water. Let every man come and drink of the water of life freely, without price, without money. It's already been paid for. Jesus is here. Jesus is here.